Hi, my name is Manuel. This video is a first in a series that I will be creating to document my journey into the Kubernetes world, in the hopes someone might find what I built useful or even replicate this implementation. When I started to investigate Kubernetes and how I could use it to implement my desired solution, there were great instructional videos out there, but nothing that covered a complete setup from beginning to end. For example, establishing a database in a cluster and how to connect services such as Nextcloud to that database. That's why I decided to do that a bit differently. I will create a complete series from the setup of a cluster all the way to a ready-to-use Nextcloud and email server. The first question that I always get is why? Why would you put so much work and effort into that? Well, for one, because I can. Two, I want to learn something new and master a challenge. And believe me, Kubernetes, that was a challenge. Number three, as I want to manage my data a certain way, which does not involve any of the big ones, such as Google, Microsoft, or Apple, I have to build my own infrastructure. I don't want to be at their mercy when it comes to my data. And four, I wanted to document the work that I put into the setup. It was a lot of work and someone might find these videos useful. So if you do, please feel free to leave a comment. I am not recording these videos to make money or hunt for subscribers. But if you want to subscribe to get alerted for the next video, please go ahead. If not, no hard feelings here. My journey started in 2012, when I bought my first network attached storage, the Synology 412 Plus. If you are familiar with these NASes, they offer a great web GI for the ease of management, allow you to install all kinds of software from built-in repositories, and enable you to build a RAID with several hard drives for the management of all your data, which you then can share over your network. At the time in 2012, one of these packages was Sarafa, a groupware with an extension called ZPush. These two applications allow to manage calendars, contacts, and emails, and synchronize these to different devices such as mobile phones, no matter if you used an iPhone or an Android device, computers, and whatever other device you might have through the ActiveSync protocol. Now we come to the reason why I make this video series. When Synology upgraded its firmware from 5 to 6, ZPush and Zarafa stopped working due to compatibility reasons. So I started to investigate how this groupware worked and if I could replicate it using open source software. I started experimenting with a Raspberry Pi to set up my own groupware. Zarafa at the time was quite open about the components they used for their groupware, which were all part of the open source communities, such as Fetchmail, Dovcot, Postfix, ZPush and others. I tried to find that overview they provided on their website, but the company went out of business and was superseded by Copano, and I could not find these documents anymore. We will get into these previously mentioned components in the following videos, but what Zarafa did was fantastic, and would it not have been for the Synology firmware upgrade, we might not even be here. After a few weeks of investigations, I identified the individual components I needed to set up my own groupware. As I had an old Athlon platform kicking around, I built a system, added some storage for our homemade NAS, and managed to get a working version of my own groupware. At the time, everything worked on this one system which had its flaws, some of the memory had a defect, and the system kept crashing. Then, one day, a friend from the Linux user group pointed me towards Kijiji, the Craigslist here in the True North. So I went out, got myself an old DL360 dual Xeon server. After installing the hypervisor of my choice, which was Proxmox, I moved everything from the Athlon system into that enterprise-grade hardware and rebuilt all the software in a virtual environment, which is now running for about four years. How does this setup look like? I'm running a reverse proxy on virtual machine number one. The reverse proxy is responsible to route the traffic to the right VM in the background. As an example, 
If you want to reach Nextcloud, you will not find that on VM1, but on another. This reverse proxy is responsible to route this traffic. A database server is running on VM number two. Anything that needs a database is stored on this second virtual machine. On my VM number three, I have the email server running. This email server consists of three components. One is Fetchmail. I guess the name gives it away, but the tool is picking up the emails from my email provider and storing them or passing them on to other components of this server. The second component is Postfix, which is dealing with incoming and outgoing email. Depending on the setup, Postfix receives emails, processes them, figures out if a user exists on the setup, and if so, passes it on for storage. In this configuration that I'm running, I'm not using Postfix for processing or checking for the existence of a user. I use the Dovcot LDA in Fetchmail to hand the email off straight to be stored in the folder of the user. That will be the major change between this setup and the one we will go through in the setup of containers through Kubernetes. I will have Postfix check if a user exists and then hand the email over to Dovcot to be stored in the mailbox. Talking about Dovcot, that's the third component of the email server. Dovcot provides a POP3 or IMAP server, which then provides access to your inbox and all the other folders that you're familiar with. On VM number four, I'm running Nextcloud. Nextcloud is the groupware. It comes with everything that you can desire, from central storage for your file synchronization, clients for your devices, Windows, Android, and iOS, calendar contact management, chat functionality, and much, much more. In this series, we will go over a few of those features, but there are way too many to cover them all. My file server is running on VM number five. The file server is running on the VM on the same hardware. There are different ways to set that up, but at the time, that made most sense for me. The VM will be the only one still running at the end of this video series. All other functionality will be moved into Kubernetes. Zpush, which is the synchronization software for phones and other computers, is running on VM6. Zpush, as mentioned earlier, is the tool to synchronize any changes from any device back to the server. Originally also developed by Sarafa, the project continues as an open source initiative by the community. At this point, I want to give a huge shout out to the volunteers that continue to develop this software, which we will go over in this series. But I'm just blown away by how awesome the community is and the devotion and dedication to keep this project alive. Thank you, everyone, for that. These services are not all inclusive, but they will be the focus of this series. Maybe once the setup of the Kubernetes cluster is complete, we can address some of these services such as PyHole or a central lightweight directory access protocol server, LDAP for short. So now that we covered what I'm currently running in my virtualized environment, we will go over the purpose of this video series. A few months ago, a colleague of mine pointed me towards Kubernetes. Initially, I did not want to take a look at all into that technology, but then a few more known YouTubers such as Jeff Gerling, Network Chuck, and others showed off some of what Kubernetes can do, and I decided a look cannot hurt. Boy, I did not know I could be so wrong. I got intrigued by the concept, and one day in spring of 2021, I sketched out how my setup would have to be to work in a Kubernetes environment. Let's walk through that concept quickly. On the top left corner, you find the database. The database will build the foundation for pretty much every service that we're going to implement. Right next to that, you find the Nextcloud, which will serve as groupware and manage calendar, emails, contacts, and other items. Underneath, you find Postfix, Fetchmail, and Dovcot. Those three components will build our email server. As our email server will not be exposed to the internet, 
fetch mail is required to pick up your emails and hand them over for further processing to the two other components Dovecot and Postfix. Last but not least on the right hand side you find Zpush which is responsible to synchronize data to your mobile devices or any device that is active sync capable. Bottom left corner shows your NFS provisioner. In a containerized environment you have to make sure that persistent data data that cannot get lost if something happens, is stored externally to the containers. That is what the NFS provisioner will do, and a container requesting storage will be able to obtain it and then store your data externally to that container so it doesn't get lost in the case of a crash. That's the concept in a quick overview, so let's continue and I will point out those different components later. This concept was the start of a two-year journey, on and off, trying to Google and identify implementations I can just use. That did not work out and I ended up building and updating a lot of the details I found over that time, which we will go over in this video series. At the end, if you follow along, you should be able to have a Kubernetes cluster with different services such as an email server, Nextcloud, sync to your devices, working. What I will cover in this video series. We will start off with building a cluster with one master and four nodes, all of which will be VMs. There is an option to use LXC containers, but I have not tested that. Such a setup might be a follow up once we went through this whole series. We will set up the infrastructure on Kubernetes, which is the foundation we have to go through from the internal pod network to Helm, the package manager, the external storage solutions, such as an NFS provisioner and open EBS, a replicated database, namely the Bitnami Maria Galera cluster. We will establish the load balancer Metal LB, as well as the Nginx ingress controller to allow traffic into the cluster. As we want proper certification without the warning your certificate is not trusted, we will set up a cert manager. I want to mention here that I do not have my own fully qualified domain name. I am using a dynamic DNS service, DuckDNS. Luckily, there are options to get a certificate for these services as well. We will have a look during that part of the series what options you have. DuckDNS is my choice, but I have seen options for other dynamic DNS services as well. Also, as the certificate is being used for other services such as the email server, phone synchronization, etc., we will set up a certificate replicator. Up to this point, these requirements are all behind the scenes. There is nothing to be seen yet. A lot of preparation work but once that is done, we will get to the cool stuff. We will set up Nextcloud. The implementation is rather complicated. And I know that I will be reading in the comments, oh, why are you making it so difficult and set up everything separately? Kubernetes is all about microservices. That is how we will set it up, as a microservice. We will do it properly. Next is the setup of the mail server. We will set up Postfix with three th replicas and Dovecot as well with three replicas. That application will be a bit more complicated as the data has to exist on all nodes and as I'm running three different pods with their own storages we will also go over the synchronization. As I mentioned, a bit more complicated. Dovecot can sync by default between two nodes. That does not help a lot if you have three so I had to come up with my own solution, which is using L-Sync. We will go over that in the corresponding video. Next is Fetchmail. Why Fetchmail? As much as I could expose my email server to the internet and receive emails directly, the hassle of tightening security and make sure no one uses my server as their own mail relay was not very appealing. So I decided to stick with my email providers and fetch my emails every 60 seconds, store them on my server. Then I will provide the IMAP feature with my network and through the Zpush Sync software. That brings us to the last component, Zpush. Zpush, as mentioned earlier, is a community project that provides 
the Active Sync protocol through PHP libraries. This project was very, very difficult to set up in a containerized environment. So we will walk through how I managed to get this software up and how you have to configure it in your cluster to synchronize email, calendar, and contacts. So now that we're through the why and the what, a few last things. The videos going forward will be numbered such as this one. The next video in the series will be two. If there is a need to have several videos in a series or I will create another video because something changed and I want to document these changes later on, the videos would be called 2.01 or 2.02. So for the introduction, that's it. In the next video, we will get into setting up our VMs and creating the Kubernetes cluster. Thank you so much for joining me and keep an eye out for the next video.